Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday, my dude. And you know what that means. It means it's time for the Theros pre-release. Oh! Today we're doing Theros Beyond Death all dang day. Now let me show you the gift of Wizards of the Coast. Let me show you a little bit of what has been provided to all the people participating in this little pre-release the day before we can all actually play together. We get 10,000 of each wild cards. Look at this. Any card I want to make, Wizard says make 10,000 of them. Oh! That's how these pre-releases work. Um, for a select number of individuals, they give a an account that has you know all this stuff early on so that way we can all just play and test and do some stuff beforehand. Um, I didn't think about checking the wild cards before I did this show. So what I did is I went to the store because I also have 400,000 gems and I bought like 400 packs <laughs> and then I opened 400 packs and I'm like, okay, let's start the show a few minutes late because I just like, really got to keep making sure that I can actually have all these fucking packs open. God damn. Whoo. But I've done it. We're going to be doing some Theros beyond death all day today we're going to be doing it all day tomorrow as well i shouldn't say all day from about one to five and then from seven to nine we have mostly walking thursday evening one to seven all day on friday we're going to be doing theros and then starting next week is the new show schedule of mostly walking mondays and then tuesday wednesday thursday friday normal full day shows we're going to kick off today's streameroni by doing some sealed theros beyond death i want to kick it off with sealed because I just love, love, love in every new set checking out some brand new cards of all rarities and types, how they all interact together in a limited format. You know, I like to steep myself in the new ideas that are there. It's really easy to, <clears throat> excuse me, it's really, really easy to, when a new set comes out, you take a standard deck, add four new cards into it, and then just be like, ta-da! I'm now ready to play standard in the new set. Which is, you know, by and large how standard has existed for a long time. There's frequently small tunings to existing strong decks, and uh, also there's occasionally brand new ass decks that wind up showing up, but um, when you're doing sealed, it's just Theros Beyond Death cards. And already we have some really sick ones. Um, Elspeth Conquers Death is unbelievable. Exile target permanent and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or greater. Converted mana cost three or greater is so good. It's so good. And again, I was talking about this in my unusually long card review yesterday. That, um, ugh. I was talking about this yesterday. That I, I tend to mentally confuse converted mana cost with power and toughness. My brain just keeps churning and switching. So often when I see convert mana cost three or greater, my brain interprets it as power three or greater. But th this this first chapter is very nice. Just exile a thing, not kill, exile. Also hits gods, so it's super strong. Non-creature spells your opponent casts cost two more to cast until your next turn. Not especially relevant when it comes to um, limited. There's often, you know, it just doesn't really matter. Most of the time it's creatures being cast. Um... And then the third one, Return Target Creature Planes Walker Card from your Graver to the Battlefield. Just Chapter 1, Chapter 3 are great. Let's look at some of the other ones. Labyrinth of, of Skophos is... I think, depending upon how I wind up building the deck, I think this could be acceptable. I think this could be an acceptable card to put in. I mean, removing something from combat for 5. If things stay allowed, if I have a slow enough meta or a slow enough deck, just having another sort of pseudo removal card for a shitload of mana you know tap five cards every turn don't worry about that creature yeah that's good enough for me um thrix the sudden storm a four or five flash flying is freaking ridiculous holy shit that's very good the, the the second piece of text spells you cast with converted mana cost five or greater cost one less to cast that doesn't really matter to me um uro titan of nature's wrath one a green and a blue. Ugh. Having some rib cage muscle pain. I gotta get my lacrosse ball and just massage myself. I'm actually gonna do that. Just look at this. Just look at this. Just, just look at this. Ah, 
Oh my god, I don't even have my water with me. Oh yeah, by the way, I love getting a little cross ball. Oh, doing this so good. Oh, Jesus. Dude, my, my chest muscles are so tight. Ugh. Anyways, so this is this card, Uro, kind of functions like a big growth spiral. We draw a card, we can put an extra land out, we gain three life, and then the, the double blue, double green to exile five other cards to let it come back in. It's very good. It's very good. Anytime it enters the battlefield or attacks, I mean, this is pretty sick. This is pretty sick. We also have uh, one of the, maybe the best removal in the entire set. Maybe the best removal in the entire set. Um, which is Exile Target Creature or Planeswalker. Exile. For three and a black. Vraska's Contempt, which was double black and two. More prohibitive to cost or er, to cast than this. And it says, look at the top card of your library. You may put that card in your graveyard. I mean, whew. It's essentially a surveil effect. It just doesn't say surveil. And for that reason, this effect, even though it technically is Surveil, it will not proc something like um, Disinformation Campaign. Um, Timret Calls the Dead is pretty basic. This is just going to be make a 2-2, make a 2-2, and then um, gain X life. This does fill my graveyard, which is very nice. So we might actually be Simic Splash Black, something like this. Let's take a look at the rest of our pack. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Despy wants to scratch the encoder. Oh, I have a gem reward. That's perfect. That'll go well with the other 405,000 cards that I have. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to investigate what all of my cards are to see what colors are strong. Um, this is a neutral 2-2. Two -two. This is fine. This is a pretty cute little enchantment. I'm kind of happy to run this, maybe, if I'm in white. Exile Artifact or Enchantment. I don't know how good this is going to be, because I don't know how many enchantments are going to be showing up. There's a lot of enchantment creatures, so this is probably just a good two-mana removal card. When enters battlefield, exile target non-land permanent, and opponent controls until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield. Perfect. This is a perfect card. Um, it's just a three-mana delete a thing. Well, I guess it's not quite three mana delete a thing. Because enchantment creatures are a theme in this set, such as, you know, Glory Bears. Look, it's an enchantment creature. Banishing Light has a lot more cards that can blow it up. In sealed, at least. In uh, standard, I don't know how much of the enchantment hate is going to make it in, because there's just a lot of regular ass strong creatures, but Banishing Light could be a mediocre card. At the very least, if I delete one of your creatures, you have to spend an enchantment killing thing to delete my Banishing Light, so. Um, at least going one for one in all circumstances there. Dreadful Apathy, another nice uh, deletion type card. Just remove a thing from the game. So I'm, I'm happy to see this, this, and this. These are nice. Favorite of Iroas. Um, this is an acceptable card, a 2-2 two, two for 3 with some upside. Heliod's Pilgrim. Look for an aura and put it into the hand. Eh, depending upon if I actually have an amazing aura. Super neutral. Um, enchantment. Double white. I don't have a lot of devotion-y things. I'm going to be skimming these a little faster. This is a very strong card. So Elspeth captures Conqueror's Death and Archon of the Falling Stars are pretty great. This is a tap down. 4-4 four, for four, 5 is also pretty strong. Omen of the Sea. Scry 2, then draw a card. Hell yeah. Hexproof till end of turn. Hmm. Seeing Lionfish. Yeah. Alright. Thrinody Singer. By the way, we have a lot of good white removal. White removal. White removal, white removal, white removal. That's, that's kind of the... The dopeness I'm looking for right away. <sighs> this is a very useful card for us getting our big, scary, bad Simic boy out. I'm looking for lots of things that put things... Power equal to your devotion to blue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She's fine. Draw a card, then discard a card. 
very good for filling it up. We have Thrix. Oh, we have the Witness of Tomorrow, so we have some more good flyers. Counter Target Spell, Scry 2. Yeah, it's okay. As long as it's not your turn, things are cheaper. This is not going to help us that much. A blue removal card, okay. Black, okay, so, so there's some good blue. Like, if I had these cards in here... Like this, this is, these are some acceptable cards. We're drawing, we're scrying, we're, um, doing some disabling, putting more things into the graveyard, putting more things into the graveyard, some removal, a counter, a big boy, a big boy. Our low end is pretty weak in blue, but that's, that's about the, the super strong blue cards that I see. I have a pair of these. Oh, that's nice. I have a pair of these. Okay. Nice. Hateful Eidolon, whenever it dies, draw a card for each aura card you control that was attached to it. Huh. Again, I don't know how many auras there are. <laughs> we found it. We found Magus' favor. Discordant Piper. Okay, that's a fine two drop. That's a very, very nice removal. That's a pretty dang strong removal. Um, sacrifice Creature, draw a card. Eh, Scavenging Harpy, exile card from an opponent's graveyard. This is, this is an okay flyer. Underworld Charger. Can't block. It's a big boy. Oh my god. Blight Breath Catabloplos. Our black is so amazing here. Gray Merchant of Asphodel is, is the kind of card that you want to have at the high end. Oh my god. Destroy target creature. Jesus. Our black is magnificent. That is magnificent. Wow. Wow. Do we get the clip? Yeah, I said that it was going to be okay and limited, and I said that it would be zero out of five in constructed. I don't care about any of my ratings, but I will die on that hill for constructed. I want to be right about that shit. God. <sighs> you people make me sick. Oh my god, we have Triumph of an Axe. It's a very mediocre card. Let's start through here. Satyr's Cunning. Mm. This creature can't block. Okay, we have a pair of these. Deals two damage to any target. This is okay. Disco and draw. This can help us fill our graveyard. Um, I don't really know what to think about this guy. Uh, but he's he's fine. Final flare. This I don't like that much at all. Irrevelant revelers. I, this thing's got to go away. I hate this pulsing. 200. Okay, whatever. Now it's not pulsing in my face anymore. Thank God. Let's see. Stampede Rider. Um, this is okay. We have... A, it appears to be some okay red. Oh, that's some good freaking red, man. Wow. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, no, let me tell you, I, I, I was just seeing that, like, and I was like, <laughs> I just could not get it out of my head. <sighs> By the way, I, it looks like somebody gifted some subbies just now. That was Atlas Fortis. Hey, Atlas Fortis. Thanks, man. Thank you, Atlas Fortis. I appreciate that. I was just in the zone, man. I was in the zone. Damn, that's like super sick. GG Graves has been keeping up with you since the beginning. Said my following of your Twitch channel doesn't reflect it. You are one of the most well-spoken people on the internet. Never change. Thank you, GG Graves. I am working hard on my speaking. I've been having the anxiety in my bones that keeps just crippling me. Oh, man, but... Trying to hang on, hang on strong, you know. Nick's born brute, love to see it. So I have real inquiries about how strong my green is. Real inquiries about how strong my green is. Like my red and my black seem quite good. 
Because, I mean, if I have an Omen of the Forge for some baby removal, Iroas' Blessing for some thicker removal, and then we, um... This is five to any target, no, it's just to a creature. And then we just have, like, Drag to the Underworld, Eat to Extinction, Blight Breath, Catabla Plus. I mean, there's almost no way you can convince me not to run black. I mean, this is just so disgusting. Fuck. I mean, it's just so good. And we have, like, removal, removal. Catabla Plus, yeah. I mean, that's just so much good removal. Wow. And white, we also have a lot of good removal. Wow. Anyways. Uh, we, we were very excited about our Simic rares. So let's see what green holds for us. Moss Viper, Destiny Spinner is an incredibly solid 2-drop. Incredibly solid in limited. This is just a very good card to have. Louisian carry to... Oh yeah, this is the ramp, Rampus Bampus guy. We have a Plummet, which is nice. Return to Nature, which is stronger than it seems because there's a lot of enchantment creatures. Setison Training. Oh yeah, this is the one that cycles itself. That's pretty good. So our Simic does have some good ways to put things into graveyards so, so far. Hydra's Growth, I'll probably run because that's awesome. Omen of the Hunt. That's a nice big boy. Oh yeah, I don't like this one that much. Alright, what are our... Oh shit. Oh shit. I think I think we gotta do like white, black, red, man. I think we just say see you later to Uro, Titan. What's the Vower of Memory gonna be doing? One man of any color, Thundering Chariot we don't care terrifically much about. Huh. Wow. Wow. I have three unknown shores. I have two altars of Pantheon. Let's let's do some due diligence. Here's what I, I don't necessarily think is going to be good. I'm going to try to do Simic Splashing Black for all my removal. I'm not going to do that, okay? I'm not going to fucking do that. Let me just do what I think is... No, okay. I always want to do the thing that I'm not that interested in first. I'm going to do Uro. Because this is just a game ender, right? It can just keep attacking and gaining life. We would... So then let's put in just our very... Uh, what we think are good green cards. Nyxborn, Colossus. Omen of the Hunt is fine. Yes. Yes. Probably at least one. And the Moss Viper for some early ground blocking. I'm not liking this, but I'm still going to make myself do it. And then maybe one of these. Yeah. So we, we, we could do something kind of like this. We have basically this one removal. We also have a return to nature and, and, and plausibly some other ways to remove things. But this, th this is just me putting in the cards that immediately I'm like, okay, I want to do that. Now, what if I also put in some of the other cards? Hmm. Like if I just put in this guy and then no, I mean like trying to just splash for black because drag to underworld is double black. The Catabla Plus is double black. Okay, so. Really, the reason I'm doing this first is we think that Thrix, the Sudden Storm, is very nice. A Flash Flying 5-mana dude is very good, because this is a very common 2-for-1. My opponent swings. I play the 5-mana creature. I block to eat a small dude. 
So well, I'm just going to keep this in our head for a moment. Okay, let's just let's just keep this idea. This is kind of how it looks. And there could be some splashing in there, absolutely, certainly. But the reason I did that first is I'm really interested in going Exile Artifactor Enchantment, Removal, Dreadful Apathy, right? This might be a little expensive to put in, but I'm going to put that in there. We also just have a lot of pretty nice creatures that we can use. But, I mean, look at this. Myers Grasp. Uh, scavenging Harpy is very nice. That's not necessary. Timurat, Farrakha's Libation, Drag to the Underworld, Eat to Extinction, Grey Merchant, Blight Breath, Catabloplos. Shit. And then we go to red, and we have these extremely good removal spells. I think red maybe has the weaker creatures here. Is there any red creature that I'm just like, oh shit, this is so good. I mean, look at this. This is removal, 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 re removal, removal. Some creatures. Removal, removal. 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 Some burn. Removal in a creature. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. It's a, it's a removal deck. <laughs> oh, fuck. But, I okay, is there anything else in red other than Iroas' Blessing that we would want to cast? Oh, my god. Excuse me. Let's remember what we have Rise to Glory in here, man. Now, we will need things, so with this, I'm going to leave an Iroas' Blessing for now. We have some one early removal. We have some slower removals. So, I mean, we, basically we want creatures down here and some creatures up here. Hero of the Pride seems fine. Uh, let's, ooh, Heliod's Pilgrim actually has some real merit with Iroas' Blessing. Like, really does. Like, really, 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 really. But uh, Captivating Unicorn is amazing. Archon of the Falling Stars here is amazing. I think maybe we just don't even run the Iroas' Blessing. Maybe not. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Discord and Piper is perfect for this. Scavenging Harpy is... Uh, I'm, I'm going to hold off on this. Actually, this is probably right, huh? I mean, it's a flyer. Hateful Eidolon is extremely good here because if I, like, cast a Myers Grasp on a creature and it dies, I get to draw a card. If I... Um, Cast Dreadful Apathy on a creature, and it dies. I get to draw a card. Is there any other... Obviously, if one of my creatures with Iros' Blessing dies, I get to draw a card. Probably favorite of Iros. Heliod's Pilgrim. These, these actually seem like reasonable-ish. See, the thing... The reason I'm not dipping too much into red... Underworld Charger is a good creature with escape. Oops, what did I just add? What did I just add? Aspect of Lamprey, which I don't want. I do not have a lot of creatures. I don't want... have nine creatures. <laughs> I don't like Underworld Charger because if we look at this, did I want Omen of the Forge? Probably not. 
It's a cheap removal, and dude, I have so much fucking removal. Alright, I'm gonna keep in all these. These are all good. <laughs> I mean, this fucking makes me laugh, so I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna hang on to this. Ah, so there, there's another creature card. Boom. I, I definitely need more creatures, but I'm just going to investigate not having this guy in. Because this, this has more value. This has more value. I mean, I'm, I'm a little pricey, but... This makes me laugh so fucking much. I gotta run this, you know. Maybe just a traveler's amulet, you know. To go hunt for the red. I actually don't have extreme mana cost requirements until I get to my pricey boys. I don't see a reason not to just do something very straightforward. Now, there is an argument to be made about what if we don't splash red? What if instead we, I don't know, splashed blue? No, no, it doesn't make any sense. All right, where, where's my where's my constellationers? What about splashing Uro? Uro is not... Hmm. I think I'm actually just going to put the Glory Bearers in. We have some... We have a small amount of shutdown stuff. Don't I have a lifelinker in here? Man, I am fucking slow here, dude. <laughs> mm. Why don't I like the charger? Because it can't block. I'm a slow deck. I'm looking for more defensive things like this. This is very defensive. This is a lifelinker. Let's us draw. I worry about me. I worry. I worry deeply about me, man. Like, so much I worry about me. Whatever. The format seems slow. I'm, I'm sticking with it. I like this a lot. <laughs> Maybe I actually don't have enough black to run a, a Blight Breath Catabloplos. So right now we have 12 creatures. I know it says 11, but this Timoret Calls the Dead makes 12. I think I'm pretty content with this. I mean, even if I have one black creature, giving something minus 3 minus 3 is very, very good. And I have a pair of these, so whatever. And I think 773 looks good. What do I think about putting in Unknown Shores? I don't like the idea of putting in Unknown Shores because it makes everything cost one more. Maybe I want an altar of the Pantheon, because I'm like already pretty fucking slow, you know.
I don't have a legendary enchantment, huh? I'm pretty pricey, but I think I think we're actually okay. I'm gonna stick with this. Well, let me let me actually just check one more thing. Yeah, maybe may, maybe like this is actually okay. Yeah! Alright, Mardu removal. Oh, yeah, the Skofos Maze Warden plus the Labyrinth is cute, but not cute enough for me. Excellent. Alright. Perfect. This is a perfect hand. Look at this board! Oh! Interactables? No. No. It is me. The swampy guy. All right, this is, this is a lot darker than I expected. I will play the discordant piper first. Exile artifactor enchantment. Enchantment creatures can get these. And this dude can't attack? Yeah. This is such a good defensive guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think we chill with this. I think we're chilling. We're gonna try and make this game go on long. So this is gonna be a long game. Holy shit. Okay. Well, we do get to play the Unknown Shores. Can't play the glory bears yet. Sell artifact or enchantment damn. Maybe I just Myers grasp this puppy. Hmm. I have enough ways to kill this bastard. I'm taking my damn time. Okay, I think I actually need to just Myers grasp the two one. I don't want to, but I, I'm worried about the next two turns. Because this turn I'm going to let four in, and my opponent's probably going to play another creature, and it's unlikely that I will have a way to kill that creature. So I'm planning to not block, not block. Library for a card, put in your graveyard and shuffle your library. Supposed to cast a graveyard, cost one less to cast. Shit. It's an enchantment creature. We can kill it. Nice. You can even exile it, huh? But what's going to go into the graveyard, man? That's what I'm worried about. Perfect. Like, not an issue at all, huh? Drag to the underworld? Okay, tight. So what do we want to do? I think I drag to the underworld this. This guy, for sure. We don't have enough mana to do both, keep in mind. 
we don't have enough mana to do both. But I think spending more mana in this way is the correct decision. So I'm going to drag to the underworld this. We're going to see if Rudavip elects to do something. Mm, you love to see it. Provoke is sorcery speed, tragically. But if I draw a white mana... Sick. Oh, we are getting there, man. I think we need to revoke some existence, like, right away. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it needs to exile. Four. Fuck. Whew. This is more of an aggressive card, but, you know, this can trade. I'm going to do the expensive thing first, because now if I draw any mana, I can revoke the existence and I can glory bears. I think I might be might be time to discord and piper block, huh? This is a fine trade, huh? Who we get pretty um to a combat trade, but... What does Glory Bearers do? It just is a fat guy. A 3-4. Hi. Guess who it is? It's dad. <laughs> this is fine. I just have nothing but removal, dude. So I'm gonna zap this guy. Chain Web Arachnid is exile four cards. I mean, basically, yeah, there's a lot of escape cards in Root of Ips deck, but each of them exiles pretty much the rest of the damn graveyard. This I let through. This I trade with. Now we have a goat. Because what I expect that Ruta might consider doing is Ruta may very well escape one of these things, which deletes basically the graveyard. And then I um, eat to extinction that. And then next turn, if I draw a land, I can play Archon of the Falling Stars. If I draw a spell, I can cast that. Oh, I think that the thing about escape that I, I think I'm only just now beginning to understand. All right, perfect. I think the thing that I'm only just now beginning to understand is you get to escape totally. Or you get to escape as a move, like, once. And then you don't have a graveyard. You know what? I'm not going to swing with the goat. <laughs> I'm imagining a deck that has several, like three escape creatures. You know, like if I'm making a white weenie deck and constructed and I have that Planeswalker Elspeth that has the escape, I'll run her, like three copies of her. But what I won't run...
Yeah, but what I won't run is like 12 escape creatures because like, you know, I think it's risky to have too many escape creatures. One escape and the graveyard's basically gone. <laughs> All right, 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 all right. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target enchanted creature or enchantment creature you control is possible to use trample until end of turn. So let's do the pricey thing first and take out the Katabloplos. Who's ready for the grind? <laughs> I should do animal voiceover. That should be my future career. Is just making gross, weird, snarly sound effects like the guy that did uh, Appa. Yeah. It's a Katabo pass off. Perfect. If we draw a land, we can cast a double spell and then start swinging again. That's fine. I'll take the one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Iros's Blessing cast on the Katablapos, creature you control. And it's going to zap this. Then I'm going to eat to extinction this. That's so good, because now I can, like, get the Archon and the Myers Grasp. Jesus. Okay. We're figuring it out. Did you guy know the guy that voices Appa also most voices Momo? Yes, Kronos, I did know that. He does tons of voice acting. By the way, this is what true delicious delight feels like, my sweet kitten. Okay, so I play Rise to Glory, and what we do is we are going to return a creature and an aura. The creature we're going to get is the Archon of the Falling Stars. The aura we're going to get is Myers Grass. We're going to attach Myers Grasp to who? this one. And then we swing out, and because of Glory Bearer's buff and Iros' blessing, there's no double block that can pick off our Blight Breath Katabla boss. <laughs> hey, you having an okay time? Yeah, that's okay. Oh, I did it in the wrong order. I'm bad. And then if this dies, then the Archon of the Falling Stars can return this enchantment to the battlefield and get yet another removal. So we're doing pretty good. Hey, come here, get in the box. Get in the box, little cat, get off my mouse. I can't do my job with you there. Let's not take your cat daughter to work day. Okay, there we go. Underworld Dreams, love this card with a capital L, <clears throat> but it does struggle. Exile, target permanent, and opponent controls to convert a mana cost three or greater. Dude, it worked. It worked. It worked! God, it feels so good. What do we think about Unknown Shores that game, huh? I'm not quite sure how much I like it. It's slowing things down pretty substantively. I think I actually just want another mountain. Maybe I don't. Ah, I'm really torn on it. It technically is generating some flexibility. Ah. 
I think the format is slow enough. I feel like Altar would have been good there. Um, Altar is going to be... Uh, there's an implied... Do I want a Shores or a Mountain? So, um... If you're suggesting the Altar Silent Knight, tell me what you want to cut. What you think is implied to cut. And do note that, again, we have very few creatures. <sighs> Fuck. Opponent goes first. Alright, sending that one back. Keep the six and send back the dreadful apathy because it's the hardest one to cast with this pile of cards. Interesting card. Revoke existence. Technically, like this unknown shores would be a mount. So in this case, we're like, great. This is helpful for us. I did it. Ferrica's Libation does not help very much. <sighs> nice. I'm just going to let in this damage, because this is whenever it deals damage. The mill effect happens. I don't think I have any escape cards. That's a slightly painful one to lose, but that's okay. I think we have a pretty straightforward... Oh, this is just Creature. This is the Enchantment Creature. Okay. Hmm. So this is probably going to be our Iroas' Blessing target. Hey. This is a bit awkward, but I think that we're still not taking that much damage. Ugh. And I think I just let this through, because this goat blocker can eventually block the fight against the barrier. Depending upon what's going on, I might just Farrakha's li uh, Libation at end of turn. Alright, these are other good ones to get. Okay, that's fine. So if target player sacrifices a creature... Almost certainly going to sacrifice the Eidolon of Philosophy, which I think is actually okay. Oh shit, I hit enchantment! Fuck! Ah, crap. Oh my god, I just clicked the wrong thing. I mean, that was such a waste. Please just... Oh, thank god. Thank god. What a relief. Oh my god. Exile card from a graveyard. Okay, that's good. Well, I think we can keep taking two. Yeah, I think I just have to... Iroas' Blessing. This enters and zaps this. It's not an incredible play. This doesn't do anything for us. This doesn't really do anything for us. Alright, draw on discards, fine. Alright, that's what's gonna get exiled. Cool, no blocks. So now we have the play that we wanna do. Nice. The unknown shores. The scavenging harpy. We get rid of this. 
And then we revoke existence on the Dryad of Ilzean Grove. Iros' Blessing would have preferred on this, but it was kind of hard to figure out how to spend my mana appropriately. Like, actually use all my mana. Alright, Skirmisher is pretty much fine. Elspeth Conquer's Death is just ridiculous here. Because then Elspeth Conquer's Death can bring back the Archon of the Fallen Stars, which can bring back the other one. So, I mean, we're in pretty much grand old shape. Get rid of this one. Oh, God. Oh, I'm feeling a lot of tightness in my... Ribcage chest area, but guess guess who's going spa wise? Guess who's gonna be go go going to the spa, baby? You know, I think it is chumping time. I'm not gonna attack because I feel like if I can just play Elspeth Conquer's Death, I'm gonna win. How are the holidays? Holidays were okay. I wasn't doing terrifically much, which was quite nice. We did it. matter. I'm not going to wait on this. I'm not going to wait on this at all. I want to be able to get my big flappy flyer out faster. And, w I mean, we saw in Simic, there's just not a lot of good ways to kill large creatures. That's fine. I mean, I will, I will trade like crazy here. Doesn't really do terrifically much. Alright. Okay. This is good. <sighs> good. Very great. Super, super tight. Do this. Our deck is slur. It is very, very slur. This is where. Oh, thank God. I'm we're we're chilling, we're in chill mode. A trade is fine. A trade is totally fine by me. Alright, now if this just gets bounced, we just die, which would stink, but, you know. I did my best. Normally we would, like, count how many cards are in our graveyard in our hand and be like, Oh, we only got X many spells, boo. Yeah, if you want to swing out with things, man, that's totally fine. One, two, three, four. Well, I think that our opponent might have some combat trickery. I think it just stays there until end of turn. Oh my god, a blind breath catabble boss. How brave is day nine? So brave. I'm at one, I don't even care. Why breath the table boss? Top three cards. Okay. 
Oh, okay. You may then exile a creature or enchantment card. So the creature that I will exile will probably be the Discordant Piper. Okay. Devotion to green. We gotta be a little bit careful here. Hateful Eidolon. Guess just this. Maybe this is a little too timid. We have four cards left in the deck. We're going to gain X life, and then we're going to swing for quite a bit. So I'm just being a real conservative here. If I attack with everything, we did it, huh? That has reach. Oh, shit. I fucking lost. Oh my god, I didn't realize that had reach. Holy shit, what a throw. Oh, fuck. <laughs> shit, I didn't realize it had reach. Alright, my bad. My bad. My bad. New cards. A new card loss. A new card loss. Whoopsie dipsies. Well, the good news is the deck is working. The good news is we're 2-0. Oh. Ooh. Reading cards is tricky. You know, I, I want to stress something that I think a lot of new players beat themselves up about. Which is, reading the card is simply not the problem that people have. The problem is that we all read the card and there's so much information spread out that it's just hard to keep track of everything. And what winds up happening in any game is your brain starts to zoom in on certain relevant portions and starts to de-emphasize things that wind up being less relevant. A really great example that wound up happening was there is a creature called a runaway steamkin. Anytime you play a... Uh, red card, it gets plus one, plus one, and then you can remove counters to, like, make more red mana to keep making stuff. As it turns out, one of the effects on that card is that it's an elemental. So there is a, a spell that got introduced that said, deal three damage to all non-elemental creatures. And we saw, so like, a ton of players, I did it, we saw pro players do it, just like, go, uh, alright, I'm gonna clear the board, and they, like, minus... Or uh, they'd uh, do three damage to everything. And then... They would just be like... Oh! <laughs> like... Oh my god! Oh! 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 So, it's not that... If you miss something, you're somehow... Lazy a fundamentally bad player, you're being dumb, etc, etc, etc. None of that sort of stuff. What's happening is that... Th that's the game. I've seen so many new players that when they mess up, they're just like, oh god, I just, uh, I just need to read the card. Uh, and like, no, like, everyone reads the card, it's like... Reading it and then like digesting the digestion is the really hard part. Commissar Mum says nobody said that, dude. Tons and tons and tons of players have said this over the years and years and years and years. Ooh, how I wish. Well, whatever. I can dreadful apathy and then exile it. Tons and tons and tons of players have said for years and years and years this kind of stuff, which is why I'm bringing it up. Which is why I honestly don't really feel particularly bad. about whiffing something with reach. I'm just like, oh yeah. Shit like that happens. Not a big deal. This is not an enchantment anymore, so that's fine. So while, while we're explaining that, um, 
Oh, comments from you're referring to something else. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, cool. Um, my bad then. Yeah, Uro is a creature that when it enters the battlefield, you sack it unless it escaped. If it did escape, then it stays on the battlefield as a 6-6. Six, six. But basically, I want Peronio to go through a bunch of hoops, and then I'll just dreadful apathy it and just zip it on out. Like, I literally, I host the Mythic Championships for this game. I see tip-top players play in the setting where everything's on the line, and players miss shit all the time. So don't beat yourself up if you miss something. Just say, oh no, this is the game. That's like totally fine. If you're playing a fighting game and you drop a combo, it's not that you suck. It's that that's the hard part. Getting the combo is a success case. Getting the combo isn't the normal case and slipping it is somehow some embarrassing, shameful thing. Other creatures you control have trample. I think I'm gonna pump the brakes here a little bit. Long story short, uh, I think that, like, with, with a lot of physical games, or I should say games with physicality, like Counter-Strike, where you're trying to aim, or Rocket League, where you're trying to hit the ball and get it to angle in, um, th there's an intuition with people's minds where they say, almost, oh, you almost made that shot. Oh, that was so close. What people don't just knee-jerk respond is, you hit it five degrees to the right. You needed to hit it more to the left, and then it would have gone in. Uh... I think that when it comes to decision-y things, there's, like, not a lot of mental models built into our genetics to, like, process that sort of stuff. I think, like, this is actually right. I want this guy to be alive. I don't especially care about these two. If there's some mega combat trick, then, you know, I just got fucking owned and, you know, whatever. But I expect more than likely to what happens is I... Eliminate some of the significant threats from my opponent's board. I lost. I will never beat this card. I will never, ever beat that card. <laughs> That's it. Alright, well, you know, I'm just gonna get on out. That's game. That's like the best card that has ever been in limited, man. Jesus. We might be on our quick way out, but, uh, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, I just like, <laughs> I remember seeing that card yesterday and going like, oh, oh, I mean, technically, I could draw my spell that says destroy target enchantment and I would have got it, but my opponent has an 8-8 with hexproof. Ah, oh, man. It would be a wee bit disappointing if we lost this, because we technically had the game won if I realized that that guy had reach, which I didn't. But this is the weird one, where it's like into the graveyard, exile two cards, and then return a creature or land to the hand. So this guy's probably going to get out. Lord Tupperware, VIP. Moss Viper is fine. Super fine. We're just going to play our favored of Irelis. This card is very good, man. God, it's so good. been thinking a lot lately about the ways in which humans just kind of have this intuitive in, basically little lies they wind up telling to themselves 
about how this or that or the other winds up working. I think playing the Banishing Light is the correct play here. Because I get this out, I get Double Strike. I get to go in. And I save my better removal and instant speed removal for later when I might need it. So I use my less flexible thing first. Now this is a problem because it can become indestructible. Play on curve, seems good. But yeah, there's a lot of like thinky type stuff that is like decisions and choices about we have to choice A, B, and C. Let me think, hmm, I think A is the right move to make. And someone comes in and goes, no, B was right. Ah, and it's almost this like, oh, that idiot. He didn't do B, he did A, he fucked up. And again, that's not language you use when I miss my basketball shot by a little bit. So I probably want to do this. It could be a combat trick, but you know, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna double block this. I want things deleted from the board. I'll have a goat left over. The favorite of Iroas is just kind of meh. I'm just using this blocker. But yeah, things like in Dota, if you like didn't use ability or missed using your wand. The game is trying to um, make sure you hit all those in the right order. If you mess up, that's normal. It's normal to not get something or the other thing. In programming, if you don't have elegant code, that's normal. It's actually abnormal to have the really beautiful, elegant stuff. That's like the hard part. One, two, three, four, five. And this says exile. Four other ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I'll take the two here. Or excuse me, the the four. Because this is going to pop down. And now the whole graveyard's gone. Yeah. Whenever an enchanted creature dies, draw a card for each aura you control that was attached to it. I mean, it's just so good. It's just so good. It's fine. I'm not worried about it right now. This is going to be a bit tricky. I'm going to have to start blocking with my goat. Oh, that is truly dreadful. Okay, so I think it's become chump o'clock, huh? Oh, wait. 
Wait, fuck! I thought that I could... Oh, wait, shit. Okay. So this is gonna go on the stack. Fuck. Shit, shit, shit. Fuck. Shit, fuck. Damn it. Crap. Well, it doesn't matter. I could have revoked existence on it then. And my opponent still could have responded. Well, farts. There's no way really to get around that. Because I can exile this. How many things are in here, too? Ah. I think I have to revoke the aura now. So that way I can live three more turns. I have a lot of powerhouse cards, for sure. get my bring a creature back, bring a another nerd back. Okay, yeah. Nice play. And everybody does. Oh! Every time, man. Every single time. Let's see if I can do this. Don't have a single flyer. I guess the biggest one. Now there's four things in the graveyard. Ah! Alright. So here's what we need to do. We need to draw like removal, removal. I don't know how we do this, but we that's what we need to do. I'm a little disappointed in how this deck performed. It felt like one turn too slow. But then we had that game again one and we just didn't realized this card had reach and just swung in. Alright, fuck. Damn it. Ah! Oh, ah, oh, the agony! The agony of that one. Ah! Oh. Well, this one kind of stunk, but I do think our deck was maybe just a smidge too slow. But more than anything, we'll just never know. We'll never know.